Well, with only one a day left before the magical numbers come out, markets are setting up for a very interesting ride. Today, we're going to be talking about exactly what happened on the last couple days in the markets. As a lot of global tensions has occurred, I finally got power back on at the house and internet. So yay me, ladies and gentlemen. And we got jobs on a deck in 24 hours. So the next 24 hours is going to be absolutely jam-packed. And you guys need to understand what to look at on the markets to understand, to be bullish, bearish, because both teams were decking it out as a lot of people were not in the best situation in the country. As you all know, Hurricane Helen came through and basically wrecked a huge part of the southeast of the United States. And just to put into perspective, this is actually a map of the power grid, which is normally lit up like a Christmas tree. As you see, the big gigantic circle on the left right here is Atlanta and everything else is dark as can be. So really showing the devastation that this place is occurred and but you guys come here not necessarily for a weather forecast you come here to know what's been going on in the markets and boy oh boy is it good to be back so not to get off on a tangent here not having power and not having internet really isn't fun so if you guys actually want to try that out i highly recommend that you just go for one day without power and hot water and see how long you last maybe think about buying that generator we're going to be talking about generac later in this video because that could be an interesting opportunity out there to make money. So first of all, let's get into what's going to be happening with the markets. We went over this in, well, I didn't, but I was going to go over this in the weekend deep dive. We'll have that link in the description below and also our options trading video if you guys want to understand how to play options. I was saying last week that I expected a chop fest or a big movement out of the markets. We did not get that. So we've actually had a very big contraction in the range for the week. But one of the things that's setting up in the markets is we're making lower lows. We're actually not making, uh, we're making lower highs and lower lows. That is a classical bearish thesis, right? But now this is what I talk about on the channel a lot is time to zoom out because if you just look at this from a shorter time period, you can see that we're downwards descending, but in a longer time period, it looks like a classical bull flag pattern on the SPY. The NASDAQ is no different. So we're going to be going over that in just a second. Another thing, on Wednesday, we rotated back to our 565 level, which was another weekly breakdown. However, the bulls bought it back up, right? They just defended that low, formed a new lower low, defended it for a second consecutive day in a row, and then pushed up high. What's the concerning thing? We're not above 570 on the SPY. Why is 570 important? That's the nine day moving average. It kind of gives me the bullish bearish intonation. However, the levels 574 and 567 kind of tell us if we need to be on the bullish side or the bearish side. Considering how many times we've broken down 567.60, I wouldn't be surprised if today's close is below that. Now, why am I not saying, okay, broken level, time to go bearish? Well, first of all, you have to break below 565.16, which was the previous all-time high rotation, and thus indicating further downside potential. Remember, we are in greedy territory, so we have to be cautious, but that does not mean that we just go full-on bear and short the market like no tomorrow. We do have job numbers coming out, which is a big catalyst. Whenever you have this big catalyst, you basically have to take all these levels and kind of throw them to the sidelines for just a moment. You don't discard them completely, but you throw them to the sidelines for just a moment because the catalyst can wipe out any direction, right? You could be selling off. We've seen this time and time again with CPI. And now jobs is a new CPI. Inflation kind of taking a backseat now, especially with Jerome Powell coming out and giving this rosy SCP in their latest meeting. And we did see that some of the rate cut got quelled a little bit, for a 50 basis point cut, especially if Jerome Powell put cold water on that, as I had no power, I wish I could have covered it live for you guys, but they put water on the 50 basis point cut in November, leaving it only up to a 35% chance versus net previously, you were looking at 60% chance for a 50 basis point cut. Now it's more of a 25 basis point cut at 64.4%. What does that mean for markets? It doesn't really mean much, right? The markets are kind of just going to go on their merry way. I did warn about this with Israel and Iran escalating tensions a month ago, where I said, hey, the Middle East is not stable. They're literally looking to shoot each other. And then everyone's like, no, everything's fine. And look what we have. We got 
Iran fires at least 180 missiles into Israel as regional conflict grows. We called it on the channel and said this is a possible threat. No one's talking about the Black Swans. And Nassim Tlaib literally came out and said, we are in Black Swan territory. The author of Black Swan, highly recommend that book if you guys haven't checked it out. But also the thing is like Fed rate cuts, just a reality check for everyone. And we're going to get into the bullish thesis as well in just a moment. I just really wanted to give you all like the reality check of the situation because as we saw in March 2020, everyone remembers what that fun a little month was during that time before the you know what came out. And essentially, as we see here, uh, rate cuts and then recession followed. So again, the question is, September 24, is a recession going to follow subsequently in the next subsequent months? If we jump back over to the yield curve, right, this basically indicates every single recession. Once it uninverts, you have between 12 to 24 months where a recession is officially announced. Remember, it's two quarters looking back. So you could be in a recession as early as six months uh, from the uninversion date, which is currently in August. So that will put you somewhere in January, February for the recessionary times. Again, lining up with politics a little too coincidentally, but we'll discuss politics and the later part of the video, just giving you guys a general summation of what's going on in that sphere of the world. So again, going back to this, this could indicate that we have further downside ahead and seeing how the market's been basically chopping around uh, where we're just hitting these levels, chop, 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 they're defending it. But the question is how much fuel are the bulls going to have? Now let's go over to the NASDAQ as I promised we would cover as well. And it actually doesn't have a rotationary level that we previously had, but we have a weekly level. Now, the NASDAQ actually didn't form a weekly lower low, or lower, I should say, than Wednesday. Sorry, Tuesday. And that's a good thing, right? So Wednesday was a little more bullish day. We're still below the nine. We closed above the key weekly level. So we don't have an actual closing uh, weekly or daily candle below the levels. We only have wicks. Okay, so we kind of have something in the bull camp and we have something in the bear camp. How do I make money off this? Well, simply put, if we continue this rotation going into job numbers and job numbers come out bullish. So going back to these job numbers real quick, we can clearly see that we got... We got bullish job numbers if we uh, look into basically the payroll number right here. 144 expected versus 142 previously. If this comes in around this level, this will give confidence to the market that job market is cooling. We're a soft landing still assured. If we don't see an increase in the unemployment number, which I'm thinking we're going to see an increase personally, just because the unemployment, you're going to see that number is just too rosy, right? But all the job revisions... And they haven't really factored that in, in my opinion, to the unemployment number. But then again, if you're looking at politics and looking which way they want to sway the narrative, then obviously this number is going to come in at 4.2. And that's what the market is essentially going to run on. The market is going to run on the number that is given, not the perception of what that number in reality is. They're just looking at, is it going to be bullish or bearish reaction? And that's what we have to play. That's where the levels come in. If we're still above 480 on the NASDAQ, if we're still above 567.60 on the S&P, then why am I going to be bearish? Why am I going to be bearish the market as we don't have a breakdown? The market is offering a discounted price as we are in greed territory. Remember, time to be greedy is to be fearful, but also that does not mean that we don't take greedy opportunities. We don't take bullish opportunities, especially when the market is selling off, giving us a discounted price to get in at. That's not to say that we just throw risk out the window. Remember, the VIX is at an elevated level, which means that insurance is a little more expensive. What does that mean for the grand scheme of the things in the market? It just means that we have to be more cautious about these levels and pay attention to them and greater amounts, right? So then going back to the NASDAQ real quick here, if we're rotating above 484.91 or closing above it, then I'd be looking for a very, very big bullish move on job numbers. If we close above that today, then that's certainly a bullish setup for job numbers because they wouldn't run it up, park it above that, that standard close and you're setting yourself up to pound through 493.70, having a massive job numbers day, because that sets up that soft landing scenario. Now, if we are below that, now, here's the bearish thesis. Then you have to be cautious because the job numbers could capitulate out any of the bears. You really want to see job numbers come out, the reaction, and play the reaction to them. If you're looking that you want to kind of play that option play prior 
to the job numbers coming out, that's where I'd be leaning. If I had to lean to one side or another, I'd definitely be leaning to the bullish side of the market. I wouldn't necessarily be leaning to the bearish side of the market. And also, here's why I say that. Let's say you play an option, right? You need it to go bullish in your, fa or sorry, you need it to go in your favor in order to pay out. If you're doing a debit transaction, I wouldn't recommend doing credit transaction just yet, just because catalyst events have a tendency to screw those trades up. For a bullish debit transaction, you're gonna put up maybe 20, $30 to make 60, right? So three to one returns, small play. And if you don't get that, okay, so, decent probability you don't get that okay you lose 50 60 percent of that tra uh, debit transaction so you lose ten dollars that's not bad versus trying to pay the downside potential and having a lower probability to go off because here's something you got all this potential to play that bearish thesis right you're on a spread transaction you're only going to make the defined profit even if the spread like let's say you play it out to like 560, 562 um, put spread, right? That's a pretty far spread. And you're only gonna make that money if you go to that transaction level. So if you get that, okay, then, but if you have the momentum to confirm it, why why put up the bad transaction when you have more upside potential? And the same with the NASDAQ, right? So the NASDAQ, all of them, if they break this weekly level, NASDAQ's got a gap. And on top, of got the 50-day moving average. So everything's basically setting up to basically have a continuous bearish play if it occurs. And also it sets up the bullish thesis to be that like riskier mentality. I personally would be trading futures and will be trading futures for the job number reaction and then playing options going into Friday, kind of setting up to see what the projection for the next week is gonna be. Because as we talked about previously, we gotta always look to see what's on the next horizon. So let's quickly just recap that before we close. And next week is going to be of course, going to be CPI week on Thursday, October 10th. So that's going to be a fun one, especially which then this is going to be the crucial inflation report. That's going to be the last one we get prior to the election. So this is going to set up the narrative. Is inflation actually conquered? Is core going to go downward? That is going to be the question we're going to be all asking about. And if you guys would not mind, I'll have the option video queued up on the left here so you guys can check it out, understanding how to play options, because uh, we're going to be talking about that in the weekend dub that's going to be coming out saturday so make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel have bell notifications on up here and again thank you so much for watching i hope to see you in the next one and have a wonderful start to your weekend